Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's video is another in the series we've been posting on the brand new Hubson Xeno Mini Pro, where we try to answer as many questions as possible that you've sent us about this particular quad. Now, today's question is an incredibly simple one. People want to know, how hot does this quad get when you're flying? And that's a fair question. And I know we've gotten a lot of comments about it on our channel. We've gotten a lot of emails about it. I've seen comments on other YouTube channels where people are claiming the quad gets so hot that when you're flying, it'll actually shut off in midair and fall like a stone out of the sky. Now, I'm laughing a little because that doesn't happen. I've been flying it for over a month. It flies just great. I've seen other comments that say, oh, the quad gets so hot that you can't hand catch it that the bottom of it gets white hot and you're gonna burn your fingers if you touch it. That's not true either. I've been flying it a lot. I don't hand catch that often, but just to test it, because I saw that comment, I hand caught the quad, no big deal. Now, I know it's subjective, right? I mean, my, my version of warm versus hot may be different than your version of warm versus hot, but I'll be fair, the quad does get warmer than other quads that I fly. There's no doubt about that, but does it get hot? Or more importantly, does it get to the point where it's hot enough where it's gonna cause issues with the electronics? So for me to give my opinion doesn't really matter much because in our world, all opinions are equal. So I'm a scientific guy. I really like to have some measure of what hot is and what warm is. There's gotta be a difference between the two. So then we can metric it. We can actually take some measurements, compare those to those two standards we've agreed on, and then we'll know, does the quad get warm? Does it get hot? Or more importantly, does it get so hot that you can't actually touch it? So I looked around for some standards on the internet of what hot means, what warm means and what hot means. And there's a lot of different studies out there. You'd expect that. There are companies that build insulation that have their own metrics. There are other companies that build heat sinks like the one on the bottom here. They have their metrics, but that's complicated because the size of the heat sink matters, the size of the fins, the style of the heat sink. So I was looking for some simple metric that I could use to understand what a human feels as warm versus hot. And lo and behold, our good friends over at NASA, you'd expect that, had a study done where they characterized warm versus hot to an average human. So they've got a metric. And the metric is for warm, 131 degrees Fahrenheit. For hot, anything over 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you'd expect that they'd have that number because let's remember, they're putting people basically in bubble suits and putting them out there in the zero gravity of outer space, in the vacuum of outter space, and it's really cold out there. So it's important they understand what those astronauts can touch and not have to worry about, you know, burning their fingers. Now, the difference between the two is they characterize warm as a surface that has a temperature where you can hold it continuously and not have to pull your hand away. Hot is a temperature that you can hold for a period of time, but it's uncomfortable enough where you're gonna get your hand away eventually. So it's not necessarily gonna burn your hand, you're not gonna get a blister, but it's uncomfortable to hold it. I think that's a fair metric. So keep those two numbers in mind, 131 degrees Fahrenheit, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So I thought, well, let me test the quad. Let's, let's talk about heat a second before I talk about the test. So heat is a natural byproduct of any work you do. You're expending energy, you're gonna generate heat. That's just the way it works. And heat is one of those things that looks for an equilibrium. So if there are two surfaces that are different temperatures and you put them together, they're gonna to sort of moderate each other and get to a common temperature. So generating heat on a quad like this is a natural occurrence because you're pushing electrons through all the circuitry inside there. This thing is sweating electronically. It's gotta dissipate that heat somehow. So again, what they do, brilliant company that they are, put a heat sink on the bottom of it. Now the heat sink is located right above all of the chips that are doing the work. And remember, what you've got here is this, this magical machine that's doing a ton of stuff, more than your phone. Like a phone's a complicated device, but this quad has got telemetry information, it's doing video streaming, it's doing video compression, video recording, it's got GPS coordination, it's got accelerometers in it to know where it's moving, it's gotta have ability to sort of keep itself level in space, not to mention the fact there's a gimbal on the front that has to fight the motion of the craft to actually keep the camera stable. All of that's going on at the same time. So what they've done from Hubson is packed in so much stuff inside there, so much technology in there that's all on at the same time. Oh, crash avoidance, there's another thing. You got crash avoidance in there. So all those circuits turn on at the same time. They're all drinking electrons from the battery and they're all sweating digitally they're sweating and that heat has to go someplace so that heat sink on the bottom its only function is to gather the heat inside the quad and then radiate that heat to the air around it so it's going to try and equalize that it's going to try and take that heat and get rid of it throw it out there to the cooler air around the quad so the three tests I thought I would do is I want to move a lot of air past that heat sink right because if I'm if I'm standing still it's gonna get hot because there's not enough air and it's gonna heat the air up around the heat sink and eventually it's gonna take a long time to get cooled off in there. But if I'm moving a lot of air past it, 
I'm pulling that heat away from the quad. So I thought, let me test the hover first, because that's basically just standing in place. It's going to get warm. It's going to move a little bit of air from the downwash of the props, and maybe there's a breeze blowing by, but it's not going to move a lot of air. So that's the first test. Let me hover it. The second test is, let me fly it. Now that's an interesting test because when you buy a quad, you're not buying a quad to hover. So I expect the hover test is going to be a lot higher in temperature than the flying test. But if you're buying the quad, you're flying the quad. So that should really be the number you care about. And the third test I'm going to do, which is the one that I think really concerns me a little bit too, is how hot does it get when it's not hovering, it's not flying, the propellers are not turning, it's sitting on your desk, either doing a firmware update or doing data transfer from the, from the quad to your laptop or your phone back and forth. That'll be the hottest. So I think in order, sitting still, it's going to be hot. I'll probably put that in the hot, don't touch it, hot range. Hovering will be warm, and flying will be warm, almost warm to cool. Now, I took it outside, or I'm going to take it outside in a few minutes. I'm going to go to a field, and what I'm going to do is hover it for five minutes, land it immediately, run over with this infrared thermometer, and I'm going to take some measurements on the heat sink. Now, I'm not trying to game the system here. I'm going to take a bunch of measurements at various points on the heat sink, and then I'll average them because there are different chips underneath there, and maybe the video processor is working harder than the others. So I'll measure all four or five of those points, and then what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to let it rest. I'm going to put it right back up in the air and fly it for five minutes. Now, I expect when I'm flying it, the air passing the heat sink is going to pull some of that heat away, which is exactly what it's designed to do. So I expect the flying test is going to be a lower temperature than the hovering test. And then I'm going to come back here at the shop once those two tests are done, and I'm going to sit here at the desk, and I'm going to transfer files into the quad and files off the quad, moving data through the quad. We're just going to sit on the desk and let it heat up to its heart's content, and we'll do some measurements there. Now again, my only, my only nick on this thing is that they didn't have a micro SD card in it. And I, I really thought, when you look at the design of it, there's a slot where the micro SD card could go in there. I like a removable SD card because I can then pull the card out pop it into my computer, do my data transfers there. I don't have to actually connect the quad up to my computer to do the data transfers. They don't have a micro SD card in it. So the one knock I've got on it is, would have been great to have a card I can remove. By not having a card, it means I have to turn it on, connect it to my computer, and let it sit there. And if I've got 128 gigs of data on there that I'm transferring off, that could take quite some time. So the third test I'm going to do is to sit it here for five minutes, transfer data back and forth, which again is simulating a firmware upgrade, so both of those would be about the same, and see how hot it gets there. My suspicion is it's not going to be too hot to touch, but it is interesting they give you this heat shield. Now, a heat shield is a cool term. Heat shield I think of back in the days of uh, the space shuttle, right? They had those tiles on the bottom, which was the heat shield. The only reason the heat shield is included is because when it's sitting on a desk, I'm sure it's going to get hot enough where you're going to go, whoa, that's pretty hot. It's not going to burn your fingers, but it's going to be uncomfortable. So if you need to do those firmware updates, you're transferring files, you just snap this on. What that does is give it a little extra clearance off the desk so the heat sink's pulled up high enough where more air can get underneath it, can evacuate the heat, and it also keeps it from burning a surface. My suggestion, though, and this is just me talking, is that we all know heat rises. So if you're going to transfer files or do firmware updates, one simple fix is just put it on its back. You don't even need the heat sink at that point or the heat shield. That way the heat will radiate up, it'll elevate up to the ceiling, and you're not going to worry about burning your desk. So my suggestion is use this if you have it and you want to use it, but flip it over. It doesn't really matter if it's upside down. The files and the electrons don't know that the quad's upside down and they're going to have a hard time going through the wire. So that's my thought there. All right, enough talking about it. Let me get outside. We'll do the hover test first, then I'll do the flight test. And then when I'm done with that, I'll come back here. We'll start the file transfers. I'll let it cool down. We'll start the file transfers, take the measurements, and then I'll give you some of my conclusions. So stay tuned. We'll head outside and do that test. I'm outside today for some temperature testing of the brand new Hubson Xeno Mini Pro. Now in the first test, I'll take off and I'll actually have the quad hover in place for a full five minutes. And when those five minutes are up, I'll land it, I'll run over to the mat and take some temperature readings of the bottom of the heat sink at various points with this infrared thermometer to see if there are any hot spots on the heat sink. Now in the second test, I'll take off again but I'll fly it around this field for a full five minutes. And when the five minutes are up, I'll come back and I'll land it and I'll take some more temperature measurements just to see the difference between the two. Now, normally between these tests, I would let it cool off so that when I put it back up for the second test where I'm flying, it actually has about the same temperature on the heat sink. But I thought, why not take it up a notch and actually just take off when that first test finishes, knowing full well that the heat sink is gonna be hotter than it would be normally. So that'll be interesting to see the difference. Now, to set the stage for this, it's a beautiful day out here in New Jersey. It's right on the money at 80 degrees. So I'm gonna take some initial readings while this is nice and cool. I'm not sure you can see this, but I'll try and get it as close as I can. And if I'm looking at the bottom of the heat sink around 90 degrees, the top around 87.4, 86.2, and 86.2 there as well. So now I'll boot up the quad. 
It's going to take a second for it to connect up to the remote. And as soon as it's ready, I'll take off and I'll start the timer. Pretty excited about this. <laughs> All right. Aircraft disconnected. So right now it's thinking. It's trying to make the binding connection between the two. It's going through its power on self-test. Any second now, it'll pop into view here. And sorry I didn't start it up sooner, but if I had started up the quad, it would be uh, getting warm all this time and it wouldn't be a fair test. So right now, we know it's around, around 87 degrees or something like that. Okay, she's yelling at me. So let me lift off. Preparing to take off. It's thinking. Sorry, hit cancel on that first one. All right, so he's up. Let's start the timer. Okay, we're counting down. All right, so we're gonna go a full five minutes here. You don't have to watch me stand here and talk to you for five minutes. So what I'm gonna do in this section is just watch it hover and we'll be get close to the five minute mark. I'll stop the timer, I'll land the quad, hopefully right on the mat. I'll take the temperature readings and then we'll put it back up and fly it around. Now my suspicion is it's designed to have air going past that heat sink, which draws the heat away from the quad. So I'm hoping that the second test where I'm flying it is gonna be much cooler, pretty close to ambient temperature um, because it's been cooled off by flying. But let's see, this is cool because this is how science works. You gotta do experiments like this. So, all right, enough of me yammering on. Stay tuned and I'll come back after the five minutes. Okay, we're getting close. This is gonna be interesting. All right, so we're at 54, 55. Let me just stop it when we get to pretty close. Five minutes, okay. Let me land it. Come pretty close to the center of that mat. I'm a little nervous. All right, it's pretty good right there. I'm happy with that. Landing. No, no, I hit the grass. All right, quick, right quick. Let's check the temperature. All right, boy, that was a bounce of crash landing if there ever was one. All right, so let's see. Again, I don't know if you can see this. I'm at 90, no, I'm at 101. 101 on the bottom, which is the hottest. 127, 115, okay, I was way off on that one. 125, and the top, again, 120, and the bottom, 106. That's interesting, I thought that would be way higher. Okay, so side is 127, 127, 123. So I'm gonna peg that right around, well, let's say 127 is the hottest point we found on the heat sink. Now, again, that's with it hovering. There's no air passing that heat sink. And we all know that heat sinks are designed to radiate the heat from inside. Processors are gonna work really hard. Now, when I put it up in the air, I'm assuming the air is gonna be a little bit cooler. And as it passes those heat fins on the bottom, it's gonna draw that heat away from that circuit board and it's gonna be cooler. So let's go, quick talk, let's get it. Now, again, normally I would do this like a five minute or 10 minute. Um, rest where I could actually cool it off and get it back down to the same temperature, but I'm not going to do that. Let's go crazy. All right. So let's see here. Let's reset this reset and start. Okay. We're cooking and we'll take off again. And now we're going to fly it for five minutes. This is my favorite part of the job right here. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay, we're getting close. I'm gonna bring it in and land it in a second just to give it a full five minutes of flight time. So nobody says, hey, Rick, you flew shorter than five minutes. All right, I think we're close. 46, all right, that's close enough. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. I can't wait to see what this temperature's like. Now, let me try and hit the mat this time because last time was pretty embarrassing. It's on a slant there, so give me a little bit of grief. Come on down. Landing. No, forward, 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 back, back, back. Perfect. Stop, stop. Good. Okay. Temperature. Here we go. All right. Let me get over here with the thermometer. <sighs> Big test here. All right. What am I at? 99, 100. 115, 112. I'm sorry, 100. 114 over there. And up top, 109. So by my measure, if the last was 128, 
and I'm at like 114, which is pretty high. Let me try that again, because I think my thumb was in there. Now it's 118, okay, so it is warmer, but again, it's running right now in my hand, so it's gonna heat up again, but you can see that there's at least a 15 degree, maybe a 20 degree difference in temperature, and I didn't fly it that long, I only flew it five minutes, and I started it with a really hot heat sink. So I think, just empirically, <laughs> when it's standing in the air like this and hovering, there's not enough air passing that heat sink, so it's gonna get warm. Flying it, like you would normally do, you're not gonna hover the quad, flying it, it's definitely gonna cool the quad down quite a bit. Now, I'm gonna head back to the shop because the other test I want to run on this is what about transferring files on and off? What about doing a firmware update where it's sitting completely still with no wind passing it at all? What's that temperature look like? My suspicion is that's going to be the worst. Hovering is going to be the next worst. And flying is going to be the least impactful whatsoever on heat. But let's test it and see. Stay tuned. I'll head back to the shop. I hope you enjoyed both of those flight tests, and I forgot to mention, I had obstacle avoidance turned on, I was recording 4K footage at 200 megabits a second, so I turned all the bells and whistles on to make it as hot as I could possibly make it, and it looks like my suspicions were pretty close. The hovering test put the average temperature at the various points I measured on the heatsink at around 119 or 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and my flying test was almost a full 20 degrees cooler, and it came in at around 102, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's obvious that air passing that heat sink is gonna pull a lot of the heat that's being generated by the heat sink away from the quad and cool it down. Now the next test I'm gonna do is the bench test, and I expect this one's gonna be a lot warmer than those two tests outside. And all I'm gonna do is power up the quad. I've connected up my handy dandy Drone Valley PowerFlex cable, <laughs> micro USB to USB-A over here. I'm gonna transfer files from my computer to the quad, simulating a firmware update or transferring files off the quad to my computer. You're just moving electrons both directions. I'll do that for a full five minutes based on the timer over here. I'll stop it. We'll take some temperature readings and see how hot it gets. Now, before I do that, let me take some initial readings so we know where we're starting because it's important to have a baseline. 79, 77 and change, 77 and change, 77, 78. Let me check that bottom one again. That's right around 79. Now that's interesting because it's been sitting here on the table. I don't know why portions of the heat sink would be hotter, but anyway, that's not enough to, to stop over. Let's see. Let me turn this guy on. All right, it's coming up. Now again, if I'm doing this um, as a regular update for firmware or I'm moving files back and forth, I'm going to flip this guy over. So I'll leave it like it is now and I'll leave the heat sink off it because I think that's going to be the worst case scenario where it's close to the table so there's not a lot of airflow underneath it to move the heat away and it's not on its back where the heat can radiate up. So let's see if it showed up. Yep, there's the Xeno Mini. So let me start transferring files. Let me highlight them all. I'm going to transfer, I don't know how much I can get over there in five minutes, but we'll see. Let's see here. All right, I'll highlight all those. And I'll move them to the Zena Mini Pro. All right, it's starting. So let me start the timer. Now what I'm gonna do is give you five minutes of data transfer here. Uh, it's moving files pretty quickly between the two. I'll give you a reading in a second of how fast it's going. The challenge as well is that, again, I, I picked on the fact that there's no micro SD card to remove on it. I also pick on the fact that, and a couple people have pointed this out, uh, that it's got a micro USB connection on the back. And unfortunately, the micro USB connection can't transfer data as fast as a USB-C connection. So it would have been great to have a USB-C on there. And if I was on the engineering team, I would have argued strongly that if we can't put an SD card in it, we have to go to a USB-C connection because people are gonna use this and transfer files back and forth. It's gonna take a long time through a micro USB cable. But be that as it may, that's what they chose to go with. We're only 40 seconds in. So what I think I'm gonna do is talk a little bit more, then I'll speed this section up like I did in the last section, and I'll come back right when we get to five minutes. Now the transfer speed on this is pretty good. Good. It's moving files pretty quickly over there. So let's see how it goes. Stay tuned that I'll be back in a minute when we get closer to five minutes. Okay, I'm going to take it out of ludicrous speed now so you can understand what we're doing. I was fiddling around a little bit there when I was doing the testing just to do some temperature checks while it was heating up. And uh, I found that the hottest point on the bottom, and the hottest I'm getting is about 106 degrees, and that's right here in the top. That's the hottest point I can find on it, and I'm touching it. Now again, I can put my hand on this. There's no issues whatsoever. It's not burning me. I'm not sitting here cringing going, Ooh. it's really, it's warm, and it's supposed to be warm because it's moving electrons. Now, I will say, to be fair, doing a firmware upgrade on this will be a lot more work on the quad than just transferring files, because all I'm talking to now is the micro USB interface and whatever circuitry is needed to move those bits onto the internal memory on this thing. When I do a firmware update, 
I'm touching a lot of circuits that I'm turning on, turning off, doing updates, moving things around, checking the firmware versions. So I expect it'll get hot when, or I shouldn't say hot, it'll get warmer when you're actually doing the firmware updates. So I'd recommend using the shield, or again, my suggestion would be just turn it over like that. That way the heat can escape above it. Now, a lot of people are going to ask me about the transfer rate. I'm right around, I've been watching it pretty closely, around 13 megabytes a second, which is not fast. It's going to take a long time to move 128 gigs of space off to your computer. So this is something you're going to have to get you know, set some time aside, put it down, and obviously you're not going to record 128 gigs of, uh, of video on there or pictures on there. When you come home, just transfer them off that night, and that way you've got a nice chunk of them on your computer. If you want to leave them on there, you've got plenty of space on the quad to store more video footage or pictures later on. But anyway, at the end of this test, what I want to kind of get at is when I look at, and by the way, I was wrong on this one. I thought this would be way higher than the hovering, but it turns out that both flying and data transfer to the quad are right around that 106 to 107 degree Fahrenheit range for temperature. And again, you can touch it. It's not gonna be blazing hot. It's not gonna burn your hand. It's certainly not gonna fall out of the sky because the best situation is to have this up in the air, flying along, even if you're flying fast and doing all kinds of aggressive moves, the air passing underneath there through these fins in this cleverly designed heat sink is gonna draw the hot air away from the quad, cool it off and allow those circuitry inside to generate more heat if needed to the heat sink and then touch the air and take it away from there. So I guess what I'm getting at as a conclusion is, as I said from the beginning of the clip, it does get warm in my hand, warmer than some of the other quads I fly. Not necessarily the bigger quads that have a giant heat sink on the bottom, but you have to remember again, what you've got is sort of a larger quad feature wise that they almost put in some kind of special shrink machine and shrunk it down to a tiny little 250 gram chassis. And all the circuitry in there is working like crazy. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So electrons are flying around all inside the circuitry. It's going to get warm. And if you didn't put the heat sink on the bottom, I'd be really worried because you can't just generate that heat off the chips that are inside. You need some way, some mechanism to increase the surface area. Flat surface generates a little bit of heat but surface area where you've got fins on it like this, you've got a bigger surface area around those fins that generate a lot more heat or are able to transfer a lot of heat to the air around it. So the heat sink's gonna fix that. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this clip. I know I was a little bit ramshackle in the way I did it, but I wanted to get it done as quickly as possible because it bothers me that there are a ton of opinions out there that are unfounded. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of people giving me grief saying, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. I thought it was a pretty fair test. I took it outside, I hovered it, I flew it, I put it on the desk, I measured the temperature in all three scenarios. And by my measure, if 131 is the temperature where you can hold something and not be uncomfortable with it, all three tests came in well under the 131 degrees Fahrenheit. 140 as you touch it and you got to get your hand away from it in 10 or 15 seconds, it came nowhere near that 140 mark. So maybe you're going to fly it in the Mojave Desert. Maybe you got to be more careful if you're flying it in really, really hot air. But an average flyer, 80, 90, 100 degree weather, you're going to be fine with this quad. And if it's hotter than that, you're putting other things at risk anyway. The battery's going to be at risk for starters because LiPo doesn't like that kind of heat. So just fly the quad, have a lot of fun with it. Don't worry so much that people have heard that it's going to melt in the air and fall out of the sky. It hasn't been my experience, and I hope this test gives you a little bit of confidence that it's a great quad. It flies really well, takes amazing footage. The obstacle avoidance is really good, and I've got some more tests coming to show you that. But anyway, for today, how hot does it get? At its worst, about 118 degrees Fahrenheit which again is way below what NASA considers hot. We got to trust those guys. And that's it for today. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions about what I did today or other questions you want to have answered on the channel, drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. And stay tuned because I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up I can't really talk about. But let me tell you one thing. <laughs> Between today and Christmas, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So you definitely want to tune in and pay attention to some of the stuff we're going to be talking about very soon. And that's all I can say. Anyway, thanks again for watching. And until next time, happy flying.